Hey everybody, this is Brett Halleck, TN Artist. Thanks for coming back and finishing up watching this forest path. So here's the final piece and what it's going to look like. I'm showing it to you now because the other parts of this, I'd originally intended to do like maybe a two, three, four uh, parts to this painting, but I decided to go ahead and combine it all into here and do it a little bit different. So I'm going to be speeding this up as we're painting it and going over everything with you uh, in it. And the main reason I'm doing that is because much like you guys, uh, I'm learning new stuff myself, pushing myself to go new directions, and this is one of those that I'm doing that with. So I didn't think it was fair for you to have to sit through my experimentation of me trying to loosen up, trying to uh, do different things more than happy to answer questions but i wanted to just kind of let you see the painting process because most of it you can see as i'm playing around with it and as i'm experimenting but some of the key points i have slowed it back down to talk about and i will mention so here i'm still using the stencils from the pack again you can move them around and twist them and turn them by using uh, control to resize them and you can use the space bar to move them around you can use alt to twist and turn them for if you want to put them upside down and stuff like that. And if you do shift and control at the same time by moving the mouse right and left as you click, uh, you can then stretch it. So you'll see me do that here a couple times as well as I'm playing around with that. So the stencils, the nice things about having a stencil is that you can completely stack them, you can twist them, turn them, and really make them do a lot of different things as you're doing it. So what I'm doing right here is I'm just using uh, the brushes to fill it in to just kind of paint in real quick the stuff with it then I'm gonna to go to my custom brush and I'm gonna to go to settings and custom brush if you look here you can see there's an erase mode if you click that now it paints the exact same way that it was except it's removing paint so if I switch to another brush like say this dots and then I go back to uh, eraser mode it's going to erase paint from it so this is a great way to add texture for especially for trees and foliage if you want to have the background peeking through or you want to have sunlight start coming through so that's what i'm doing here is i'm breaking up those solid patches of color to do this so um, like i said this was this piece became a real experimental piece for me and playing around with it uh, mainly because i'm trying to expand my just my skill set and paint a little bit freer and because there's some ideas and thoughts I have in my head, so I want to experiment around and play around with that. And so that's kind of where that comes uh, from doing it. So, uh, so I figured I'd speed up some of this and kind of show you. So right here, what you see is a, another, remember I mentioned a, a tip that you can do with these brushes. So if you go into Brush Designer, start with just one of the preset brushes, go into Brush Designer, and then select the stencils. You can then use them to start making custom brushes. Now, when you put, first put it in there, it's going to be like it was where it was a square. You select Invert, and then that lets you start playing around with the shape of it so it's not painting that square. You can then do the exact same thing by going into the grain and selecting one of the other brushes or some of the preset ones to be different grains, and then you can paint around with it. And, and by doing this, you can get some really nice custom effects and some custom brushes. And again, play around with inverting it, play around with leaving it, so you can get stuff like a filbert brush look. You can get stuff um, that could be great for grass and really uh, just by taking and messing around with the different stencils and loading them in as custom brushes and then you have them so for example right there the, by taking those pebbles and that bush i now have a nice grass looking brush that i can use for a lot of them so so it's, it's really good to go in there and play around with these and you can make custom brushes you can really geek out on this and do that but that's another way you can use these stencils and get extra mileage out of them more than just stencils okay um the other thing with this is, is that as you're doing these and you want to make sure and save them if you like it you'll just put new preset and you'll tell it where to save into the uh, groups of brushes over there and you can save it but if you don't save it and you click on another brush what you just did goes away okay um, i think that's a little bit of a flaw in design for art rage but it is what it is so um Again, try that and play around because you can get some really nice brushes and some customs. I do have a set of custom brushes I'm going to be releasing. Uh, not a huge set, just some of my favorite ones that I've made that I paint with that I think people might want to uh, play around with as well and, and kind of use. So it's just different ones I've made for doing mountain scenes, for doing 
forests and all that kind of stuff and play around with this. So now I'm going to speed back up a little bit and just continue to paint and put in color and look at shadows and really uh, get a feel for where stuff is. And, and one of the things with paintings, which I'll tell you with this one that I kind of almost did with this, uh, honestly, if I, if I hadn't had this started for a lesson, I probably would have just moved on because I, I kind of lost my enthusiasm for it. I got it back, but I kind of lost it. But that's my the tip I want to give you with this too. There is going to be a point when you're painting, and it happens with every painter, it happens with every painting just about, where you kind of lose your steam. You kind of lose your direction with it. You kind of lose what you wanted to do. You have to push through that and be okay with the fact that you might not get the exact finished painting that you want, but sometimes you get something better. And if you don't get the finished painting that you want, put it aside, come back to it, um, but do the best you can to try and push through it. Okay. So this right here is me working on trying to develop the rocks and develop everything else in this and start playing around with the composition a little more and some of the layers and that kind of stuff. So uh, just let it play through for a little bit and then I'll jump back in here with some other tips as we hit other sections where I slow it down. Now this is one of those areas where I wanted to slow it down a little bit and kind of talk about some stuff. So I'm adding in some shadows and some layers, but as I work on this path, I wanted to start building textures. And again, my paintings are all about building textures, doing underpaintings and everything else. So I'm going to use some more stencils here in just a second, but I need to think about how does this layer under one section, which layers under another section, which layers under another. So thinking of that, I go to the pebbles uh, stencil. Again, you can use Alt to rotate it. You can use Control and your mouse to change the size. And then you can start painting in some of these different textures. Now, I'm actually going to come back and do this later some more where I add in more textures on this and actually use it to make pebbles. But right now, I just really kind of want some of the spots. So again, uh, Control to change the size. And these pebbles are kind of painted in perspective anyway. So you can kind of use it this way if you want to have some rocks and stuff. Shift control will let you stretch it by moving your mouse to the left or right. And to the right stretches it horizontally, to the left moves it vertically. So that's what I'm doing here is kind of doing the stencils. But I thought it'd be worth showing you this again because I talked about it earlier with the bushes. So I'll let you get back to watching this and I'll jump in here again. Now, as I'm going through here, what I'm doing is just using, again, the different brushes to add in texture and smear stuff around. And that's everything from the custom brush to uh, the oil brush, but really just kind of using it because the, the custom brush will blend as well as add color. So I'm just kind of uh, going through it and using the bristle, the artistic bristle, bristle brush to uh, add streakiness and add grass and so forth. And then a little bit of uh, color here and there with some of the others. So as you're going through and doing this, pay attention to where the light's coming from, what direction. Again, this is still very much kind of the underpainting for this. And this is a little bit looser painting than uh, you've probably seen, seen in some of my other ones. But 
you know, I'm just kind of going around the picture and, and making sure I'm kind of working it as a whole before focusing a little bit more on some of the other areas to bring it forward and trying to lay in the path a little more, lay in the light, lay in the transitions and get a feel for where that is and so forth. So one of the things that I wanted to do next was start laying in this stream that is coming across to the left. Now I've got these stencils and I want to show you one other thing that you can do with these stencils is just because they're labeled a certain way doesn't mean you have to always use them a certain way. And here you can see that I'm using the control and shift to stretch and twist and turn the uh, stencils and really let them do a lot of the work. And again, you could go in and hand paint these, but the point of the stencils is to really let you save time by getting in the shapes and everything else that you want. And then from there you can go in and customize and, and blend it around to be how you want. But right now that gives me a good solid underpainting to start with for this little trickle of waterfall, mini waterfalls for the water coming across here and it adds some interest and not going to add a whole lot to it because I don't want this to become the center of interest to be kind of weird for it to be at the bottom left of the painting and that be my center. But one of the things that I wanted to point out is that you can use these stencils absolutely for what they're labeled for like waterfalls and water and uh, reflections and stuff like that. But then you can also use them in other ways to create more effects and twist and turn them around. So what I'm doing here is I'm just taking that bark stencil that I have and laying it in and messing around with it. But then once I get that done and using it as my guide to start adding in and building that texture, I'm going to take some of the other stencils and mess around with them as well, including that waves one, which can make some really nice painterly uh, bark effects. So um, what I'm doing here is just kind of trying to resolve some of the look and feel for this tree. Since it's closer, it's going to have more texture added to it. So, you know, stack the stencil upon itself, move it around, twist it, then go back and paint it a little bit more. So that way you're really getting a, a buildup of layers of texture and not just one thing because you don't want it to look like you stamped it. So just keep moving it around and stretching it and turning it and then again be willing to use the stencils multiple places but then also be willing to use the other stencils as well to get that look and feel that you really need with all of these. So, But it's a good way to lay in your base texture, your base feel for it and then just kind of keep twisting it around and, and playing with it to get that overall look and feel for it. So that's what I'm doing. So, and then the other thing too is just kind of again working all around the picture, playing around with uh, some of the different textures, adding in some scrub, adding in some bushes, some darkness to make the stuff blend into the painting, and then keep moving it around. So, uh, that's kind of that part for now. I am going to paint in some rocks here and use the uh, watercolor stencil to add the texture to the rocks, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm just adding in some rough shapes of where I want the rocks to be. And then I'll go back and take the watercolor texture stencil over top to lay in some of the texture for the rocks and it just kind of gives it a more random feel. Once I've got that done, I can go back and add highlights to it. So here's the watercolor stencil that I have created that's in the stencil pack and as you can see it just starts adding in some nice textures over that and then you can go back in that and paint with the uh, uh, the oil brush over top of it like I'm doing right here to really add in some pop to the highlights and the nice thing about it is it takes some of the guesswork out of where you're putting stuff and then once you got it in there you lay it over top of it and you can take the knife tool and really kind of blend it back and again get some of that texture and build up so it's all about layers upon layers upon layers to really get the nice look that you want so uh, just keep going here and just um, add in more stuff to it so let me know below any comments or questions you have about any of this process and make sure to jump on the Facebook group to ask there as well so I try to get back to these as fast as I can
So one of the things you see right here that I'm doing is I'm actually using the waterfall stencil to put texture on my trees. Don't feel limited to using these stencils just for one thing. And I think I mentioned this before, but just you know, try to make sure and move it around. Use them to get the texture that you need, get the look that you need. That's the important part. That's the great thing about the versatility of these stencils is that you can use it to really start building up more than even just a custom brush. But um, this works much more quickly, uh, much easier. So um, make sure to move them around and give it some try with some different things and do that. So that's kind of what you'll see me doing here throughout this. So we'll just keep going.
So remember when I said at the beginning that part of this is kind of a learning curve for me as well as we're doing stuff. Now I've been painting for years and digital painting for a good while now too. But every painting offers some sort of different learning, some sort of different problem, some sort of thing that you need to solve. And that's kind of what I'm doing here is, is experimenting around, looking at where I'm going and where I'm wanting to be and trying to play around with that. And I'm also looking at things I don't like and things that I think could change. One of the things is these big blades of grass sticking up. I knew that I just didn't like it, so I wanted to play around with it a little more and going into the custom brush and just messing around with the um, settings. Now, a lot of custom brushes will pick up color underneath, and that's just a quick setting that's in the preset. So if you go to Brush Designer, you can turn that off. It's like the third tab where you see that. And that's what I wanted to do here. So this is that canvas brush and the custom brush that's part of what the ones that come with ArtRage. But I wanted to lay down color in a more horizontal fashion and light coming through than those blades of grass because I thought that was too much of a vertical and it was kind of messing with the composition. So I wanted to fix that and start adding in more distinct shadows to kind of start pulling your eye towards the middle and make that path lead you in. Because I do know I'm going to add more highlights to this water here, so I need it to kind of direct your eye the waterfall is going to kind of be your entrance in the painting for a lot of people where they look at it, they see that, they follow it over to the right, and then the path pulls them back up to the left in the center. So keeping that in mind as I'm developing the composition of that's what I want, but I kind of want that center section to be our main focus of that back area. So that's what I'm working on here is laying in some more distinct shadows, some more distinct highlights, and that's just by using that custom brush and turning off the color pickup. So I'm getting a more pure color laying in, and then I'm sampling colors from the canvas now as I'm using it. I don't want to get so many new colors. Instead, I want to use what's in the painting so I have much more harmony throughout the painting. Now there are certain things in it that I looked at as I was going through and adding some of these colors that I realized I just didn't like. I didn't like the way it looked. Um, and it needed a punch up of a little bit of stuff. And so as I'm thinking about that, I wanted to start adding in the highlights for the water and kind of getting a feel for how it looks. Again, using that same uh, brush to play around uh, and, and mess around with it. And then switching over to uh, this back section was one of the areas that was bothering me was this tree. So by just sampling the colors around, I can start painting it out. And this is one of the great things about digital is that if you're working in layers or if you're working uh, to where you're doing this, it's easy to paint it out and not have to try and match the color perfectly like you would if you were painting with oils or with um, acrylics. And so I just wanted to kind of push this tree back a little bit. I didn't like the way it was uh, kind of taking over that negative space there. So I thought this was more interesting to kind of make it look like a tree that was kind of on its way out, you know, but not quite there yet. And um, so I'm starting to really play around with some of the shapes, the textures, the negative spaces, using the lichen custom brush to uh, start laying in some leaves and areas like that and some darker foliage here and there, knowing that I wanted to again break up some of the, the solid spaces of color and give some more diversity. Doing this on another layer so I can do like I'm doing right now, which is erase any overspray from it. Um, so I'm doing that. So now this is another one of those tree stencils that I'm going to use to make a brush. So by simply turning it, expanding it, and then taking the selection tool and going around it, I've selected just that corner of the canvas and can paint into that and get that nice uh, bush kind of look really quickly and easily by just continuing to uh, paint over top of it and use the dots custom brush. So uh, I use the dots to make the uh, berries that are in the bush and then uh, airbrush because the berries themselves are on a different layer. I can select that layer content or actually lock transparency and then paint those berries as well and then go underneath the bush to start painting in some sticks with my limb right that I have here. So, and just using the roller to do that. And so it's a great way to quickly do it. Um, the, using the pen tool gives you a few uh, nicer looking sticks. So I switch to that and start playing around and then merge my layers back down 
and kind of take a look at the whole piece, you know, making sure to scroll back and look and see, is it kind of answering the questions that I want it to. One of the things I wanted to do there, if you press control J, you can bring up the adjustments. I really wanted this to have this intense color that you see here and because some of the colors are muted. So I brought up control J and then adjusted my contrast so that I could get it to where I wanted it. Um, waterfall needs a little bit more highlights. So again, pulling out that waterfall stencil, I can then start adding in and layering more splashes on top of that, that I'll then go back with the palette knife and soften a little bit as well. So again, as you're going through it, look for the areas you can refine, look for the places that you can add some pop of color, some pop of light, some interest, and really um, use it to guide somebody through the painting as you're going through it. So that's what I'm doing here is kind of playing around with the, light, the lights and the darks and the highlights of some of it, some reflected light from the waterfall and laying all that in to kind of get a good smear for where it's uh, going to be. Pushing the rocks back, um, pushing the waterfall behind some of the rocks and kind of playing around with it. So again, move around the picture, look at the painting. I keep this zoomed out so I can see it. It's about 62% uh, for the full size. So that way I'm seeing the whole thing. But this is where I started. Remember how I mentioned about pushing through? This is where I started to push through. And I started to really kind of get to where I wanted to go. Not there yet, to be perfectly honest, not there yet. Um, I actually got to a point where I was even got a little more frustrated and wanted to stop, but I knew I needed to finish this for you guys. So I um, came back through and, and pushed it some more to really play around with it and get it. So this is, you know, this is a, was an interesting place for it, but I wanted to zoom in and look at some spots here where I thought things overlapped, where I thought things just didn't look right. Uh, some of the textures looked off. So I'm just going back in and repainting over top of some things to kind of give a little better finished, polished look to it. Uh, even though it's small things, but that is one of the things with stuff as you're doing digital painting is make sure to zoom in and take a look. So here's the pebbles again. Um, what I'm doing is selecting just the path. So that way all the stuff I'm going to be painting will be just in that path. And that's by using the freehand uh, setting for that. And then I'm just taking the roller tool and rolling in the color. So um, and kind of playing around with it so that it's on all in that path, all in one layer. And then what I'm going to do here is take that and put it on multiply so that it kind of sets itself into it. And then I'm going to selectively erase some of those pebbles that I don't want and get rid of them. And so um, it just gives me a chance to kind of play around that. And then what I'm doing is taking the airbrush and darkening certain ones. So uh, that way they can become like little stones and little pebbles, not just spots on the, on there. So that's what I'm doing with this is kind of playing around with the stones. And you really, what you do is you take this, these pebbles and you can lay them in there and start darkening one side and then lightening one side. And so that really gives you a, a nice stone look as you're going through it. So here you can see, now this is a weird thing. So see where it's got all these little light spots. That's kind of a uh, quirk of art rage that if you're selecting something and you delete it, it can leave that white space underneath it. Anyway, you just got to kind of play around with it. It's just a little quirk that it has when you're working in layers like this of duplicating stuff. So uh, the best thing really is just go in and delete it like I'm doing some of the stuff here because it acknowledges the delete, but if you erase or something, then it thinks you're erasing the layer underneath that. Anyway, it's, it's kind of a weird little quirk that ArtReach has. Never quite understood it. And so I'm trying to go back and, and do some of these things and clean some of this up because I don't want it so busy with all the pebbles and everything through it. So highlighting these and everything there. So one of the things with the final piece that I was going to record and didn't get a chance to do was some of the final highlights. So to do the final highlights, what I did uh, was I created a separate layer actually two layers. One was a layer to add in more foliage and I just used the custom brush for the leaves and painting in a bunch of leaves and bushes in the foreground over top of some of the other ones. And then I use another layer uh, set to overlay for the blend mode and take a really light, almost white yellow 
and paint in splotches of sunlight coming through. So that was the only thing that it didn't really catch was me just doing that. But the majority of the rest of this has been caught here. And what I'm doing here is painting below the stones to give them kind of a cast shadow and really set them on this. And some of them I just smudge out completely and really soften it out. But this, by painting this and then just slightly smudging the base of it, it sets the stones onto the path. It lets you really see that they're part of the picture and they're, you know, for that. So this is uh, the final steps that'll be here is just me kind of going in and pushing this waterfall back behind the rocks so that it looks like it's truly coming around them and coming down and seeing that. And then just some small cleanups. And then, like I said, those extra two layers to add in some of the highlights. So that way uh, it kind of gets that finished look that I wanted. So um, I think that's just about everything on here. Let me show you that final piece again. So that way you can see it and see some of the highlights that I went back in and added in and then some of the grass in the front. So thanks again for watching. Make sure to subscribe, ring the bell for notifications and come on over to Facebook and join us there. So appreciate it. Hope you got something out of this. Let me know any comments, questions or thoughts.